Good evening. A woman has told STV News she is one of the 40% of women having abortions because of unaffordable childcare costs. It comes as new research by the group Pregnant Then Screwed found household income of 84% of Scottish parents is the same or more than their monthly wage, meaning some are effectively paying to go to work. As Ollie Dixon reports. When Hannah fell pregnant for a second time, the cost of being a parent had already hit hard. Struggling with the expense of one child's care, a second felt impossible. We've protected her identity as she tells her story. Me and my partner have a little girl who's almost two. When I had to go back to work, I knew it was gonna to have to be a private nursery because of the hours we both work. The cheapest was 900 pounds a month for three days a week. But then when I fell pregnant again, I had to think about the fact I was going to be working just to cover childcare costs. And you want to give your kids the best life you can and spend time with them. And so we had to take our feelings and thoughts out of it and say objectively, we can't afford to have this child. We had to make the choice. It was not something we can do. And I had to make the decision to end the pregnancy. It was a life-changing decision for Hannah. For others, childcare costs have played a major part in their choice to move abroad. Lauren and her family emigrated to Sweden when her son was two. She says friends back in Scotland are shocked at what she receives in her new home. Children in Sweden go to a daycare that's called Forskola. So we pay £100 a month for our six-year-old to go to Forskola Monday to Friday, nine o'clock till four o'clock. That includes two meals and he gets fruit and milk. My friends in Scotland, you know, they're paying over a thousand pounds for the same care that's not always as good a quality as what I pay a hundred pounds for. The organisation behind today's figures say that families are often left facing these choices due to a lack of consistency in the delivery of childcare across the country. The funded hours that are in place just now for parents and children in Scotland when they turn three and four, there are a lot of issues with councils delivering it in different ways. So I think we have to have really frank, really honest conversations here about how we take childcare forward in Scotland and how we make it far more affordable for families. The minister responsible for childcare policy, Natalie Don, was unavailable for an on-camera interview with STV News. A Scottish government spokesperson said, a woman's right to choose is a deeply personal issue and explained that they recognise that supporting families through high-quality, affordable and accessible childcare is critical to our national mission to tackle child poverty. But as Hannah's case shows, some are still having to make challenging decisions when they feel that support is not enough. Ollie Dickinson, STV News. People living in a block of flats in Edinburgh where several homes were destroyed in a huge fire have told STV News they have numerous questions about the safety of the building. 100 residents were safely evacuated following last week's blaze. Here's our senior reporter, Gordon Cree. Now the cordon's been moved back, we can properly see the extent of the damage to the Bridalban Street flats. A blaze described by one firefighter as the hottest he's been at in 30 years service has left homes reduced to a black and twisted shell. Cameron works at an office in the same complex and had been renting a flat adjoining those where the seat of the fire was. Watching it go in flames and knowing that that's where you live is quite a scary prospect. And you know, our hearts go out to the people who are worst affected. I mean, it's, it's terrible. And you kind of just wish them all the best uh, moving forward. But yeah, it's a scary prospect. And as I mentioned, I, I don't know if I would want to live here again. The way the flames spread in the early hours of last Thursday was hugely concerning for residents. There were already overnight patrols here because of wooden cladding and plans to replace it. We've been told a series of discussions had taken place down the years about the safety of the building. Problems being highlighted include concerns over fire compartmentalisation, suggestions of insufficient alarms, inadequate fire seals round doors, the state of fire breaks and service voids, and claims the nighttime patrol didn't follow expected procedures. The building's factor, Lowther, told us these are issues for the developer Persimmon, 
while it said resident safety remains our priority and interim measures are in place to improve building safety until remedial works are completed. The fire service say the investigation into the full circumstances here goes on. Gordon Cree, STV News. There are fears Scotland is unprepared to track the spread of new super strength drugs linked to at least 25 deaths in recent months. Comes as 15 synthetic opioids, including substances called nitazines, were banned by the UK government. Anyone involved in supplying or importing these drugs will face an extremely long prison sentence. Besides making these drugs illegal, we're also stepping up our early warning and surveillance systems at the border. Well, experience tells us that banning substances has minimal impact on their use and their harms because the drug market is so varied eh, and eh, the supplier to that market can pivot quite quickly to other substances. Other stories now and 150 jobs are set to go in Glasgow as the city makes cuts to its health and social care services. The City Council's partnership with the NHS says it's cutting services to balance its books. A cyclist hit by a lorry in Bears Den has died. Police say the 56-year-old woman lost her life in the incident during yesterday morning's rush hour. The Scottish Government has been hit with a damning report warning they are nowhere near on track to meet climate targets, but the Energy Secretary says they are still committed to net zero by 2045. Now here's Sean with a look at your weather. A heavy downpour will subside and light relaxation will set in. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Very good evening to you today. We've held on to largely cloudy skies and east with some shower outbreaks of rain. Best of the sunshine in the west, spring sunshine as well. It is the first official day of spring. Second and third day of spring, not looking quite so kind. Blustery weather on the way tomorrow and also on Friday. Lots of showers and plenty of rain tomorrow as well. That rain starts to arrive in the west by the end of the night and during tomorrow, rain spreading to all parts. So there will be a bit more showery, especially across eastern parts of Fife, East Lothian and also across the borders. A little bit of a rain shadow here. So the cloud breaking up at times, showery rain here, but for most of us it will be wet, especially wet across parts of Ayrshire, Argyll and Butte. But we should start to see sunnier skies coming into the northwest by the end of the day. Top temperatures, even though it will be windy, it's wet, it will be mild. 11, 12 degrees, mid 50s in Fahrenheit. Blustery day to come on Friday, a little bit chillier as well. Still lots of showers, less showers Saturday and Sunday, but that's because the wind swings round to a chilly northerly. Bye bye. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Rona's here next with Scotland Tonight. From everyone on the Lake Team, thanks for staying up. Have a very good night. Bye-bye.